today we are going to be talking about Canva. I'm sure there are, are a lot of other programs similar to Canva, but Canva is the program that we've been using on our team for years and it is so, so good. So Callie is our marketing gal. Anyway, so she does all of our social media posts. She does all of the like graphic design. She, oh my gosh, there's like crazy list, Callie, that you do, especially now that we've created like a Trello board with all of your tasks, newsletters, blogs, like you name it, your list is actually quite long. So I'm really excited because Callie is going to be going over Canva and a lot of the tips and tricks that she uses on it to make it super user friendly. So I'm going to hand it over to Callie. Also, you guys, this is interactive. So please do not be shy to like pop on and ask some questions and stuff. Cause I mean, the whole purpose of the collaborative mastermind is obviously for everybody to learn and like get as much out of the videos as possible. So if you have a question, I'm sure that there's a ton of other people that are probably thinking the same thing. So do not be shy. Please just turn your mic on and ask your questions. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind getting interrupted. So you don't have to worry about that. It doesn't bug me. I'd rather hear your questions and get everyone chatting. So I don't consider myself an expert on Canva, but I've been using it for a while. I probably use it every single day working for Skyly and Forever Kamloops. The nice thing about it is it is super intuitive and user-friendly. There's just a couple of things that I'm going to go over that will just make your life easier and make everything go faster. Okay, so I'm going to talk about today mostly about using Canva to create a strong brand presence. So these are a lot of the uses that I use Canva for. I'm sure there's like so many more, but this is just kind of what I could think of. I know that even Skyla used it for uh, Hadley's birthday invite. Like it's just, it's really unlimited. I can't really think of anything that you couldn't use Canva for, honestly. It took me like two seconds to make that invite too. And then I just yeah. like downloaded it and text it to everybody. Well, and that's the nice thing is that it comes with so many templates, but it's so easy to customize them. Yes. And that's kind of what we're going to go over. I used to make them from scratch and that was tough. And then I realized that I could just use templates. <laughs> yeah. I like the, the templates are good too. Cause like, at least then you have like a, like you have a starting point because you can obviously like change a lot of things on it. But I mean, at least you have like something to build off of. It's really hard, like you said, to start from like the very bottom, like a white, a white page. Yeah, because when I first started using Canva, I didn't realize how much you could customize it. So I was like, oh, I don't really like the look of that. I don't like the colors. And then the more I learned, I was like, oh, OK, I can change all these colors. I can change these photos, these shapes like yeah, it's yeah. just a good, good basis. So first thing we're going to go over is creating a custom color story or co color scheme for your brand. I just wanted to show you this too. I thought this was kind of cool because the last meeting that I did, we kind of touched on it, how color makes such a difference and there's a lot of psychology behind it. So I just thought this was kind of like a cool graphic to give you just a small example of some of the, the feelings associated with each color. I don't even think that we're super conscious about it, but just seeing a photo that has yellow, it can make you feel just optimistic, warm, friendly, those colors. And then red is obviously very like bold and youthful, I guess it says, exciting. Yeah. Anyways, this is just kind of an example of how much color has to do with brand presence and brand association. So for Forever Camlets, we use a lot of green because I think like it's calming. It makes people think of money and growth and nature too, actually. It's used a lot in like eco-friendly stuff. So I was just going to show you a way that you can create your own custom color palette on Canva. So all I did here was I looked at calming color palettes, business, and as you can see, there's just so many. You can go on Etsy as well and pay for them. And they'll give you the hex code number, but I really, I don't see the point in it because there's so many free ones out there. Yeah. So, I think like Pinterest has lots too. Hey, like if you want to go on yeah. Pinterest, because I always look there and they have like the top, like new colors for the year and stuff like that. Like whatever's yeah. like in and trending, obviously you don't want to change your like brand colors or whatever, but 
I mean, if you're mm-hmm. looking to like set up your brand and have like a cohesive like color scheme, that'd be like a good place to to look to. Yeah, definitely. And it's just kind of like you can just pick the feeling that you want. So for this one, I put calming color palette business and you could say bold or exciting, youthful. And it's going to give you a bunch of different combinations without you having to try and put them together yourself. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of combinations too that you wouldn't even think of. And then you see it and you're it's like, oh, that looks really nice together. So for the demonstration, I'm choosing this one. So I'm just going to add to my photos. I'm just going to go on to this website. I just typed in hex color code picker and there's a whole bunch that come up, but I, I like this website the best where you can put a photo in and I've already done it here. So I'm just going to tap whatever color I'm interested in and it's going to give me the hex code as, as well as the RGB, but Canva uses hex number. And this is the same for, I believe you can even like bring this to a paint store and they'll be able to make the color just from that. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Good to know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So let's say I want this nice pale color. So then I'm just going to hold this down. Oh, there's actually a button there. Copy it. Then we're going to go back to Canva. And then you're going to go, this is where it is. Sorry, guys. I don't have to do this very often. So it's kind of like, (laughs) forget where to go. So what I did there was I just pressed like the color button up there. And then as you can see here, like there's a few different round color schemes that I have here. So then I'm just going to go edit. And this is the one that I created for today. So I'm going to add this color in. You just go into there, paste, and there it is. So then you can just go back, copy it, back to Canva, click the plus sign. Where are you right now, Kelly? Like, cause this is, you're creating like templates so that people can save their own templates, but where did you go in order to like save that? So just here. So when you're on like a blank page, you're going to click this color button up here. Can you see? Oh, okay. Now I kind of see like that little pink square at the very top. Yeah. Okay. So you click and that. Then, yeah. And then there's this option here, untitled brand kit. You just click edit. And then I just I don't see down. your cursor. Do you guys see her cursor when she's moving it around? Because that's my issue is that I don't see your cursor. Oh, yeah, right. Because I'm using my finger. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, when you say here, I don't know what you mean. Okay. So on the left where it says untitled brand kit. Untitled brand kit. Sorry, I'm just looking. And yeah. then did you click the edit button or did you yeah. click untitled I, brand kit? I clicked edit. Okay. And then scroll down. And this okay. is the color palette that I'm choosing today. I can rename it. Let's name it Canva. So then if you want to add another color into the palette, you just click the, the white well, box plus with button. the plus sign. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then clicking where it has numbers and paste. Got it. Oh, it's already in there. Yeah. So that is pretty simple. That's the way that you would kind of start putting your your brand color scheme together yeah so then if I wanted to so say if you are like say you're starting like a new graphic design that you wanted to do and you picked a template then you could click on that little color thing and it would pop up with all your options for color schemes is what's happening yeah that's right so let's say instagram post you can see all these templates that are all completely customizable so let's say i'm just going to click this sale one and i want to use my brand colors so you're going to click on what whatever shape you want to change the color of so i just clicked on like this kind of flower shape yeah And then again, just in the top left corner, I'm clicking the little pink square. And then going down and I can see that my color palette is right there underneath Canva. And then I can just click that. And it's kind of cool too, um, actually, that it it picks up the photo color. You can see there. So it kind of gives you like suggestions if you wanted to like be really matchy matchy, which is actually pretty similar to the color palette that we just created. So if I wanted to change the circle, I just click the circle. Again, find the little colored square. And say I wanted to change it to that. 
can change the text. If you just click the text and then up at the top in the middle where there's an A with a color underneath it, I'm changing the color. Cool. And then we can change the background too. You can either upload your own photo or you can go to photos and it's got all these unlimited free photos that you can use that people put up. So then I'm just holding it down with my finger because that's what I'm using or you'd use a mouse and then dragging it over and then it fills up the background. One of the other things that I really like too, Callie, is like the fade option because for us, and I'm sure for a lot of other people in the industries too, say for example, you upload like a house and you wanted to put text over top of it. You want like the background to be faded so you can still see the image, but then like the text is bold enough. So do you know which one I'm talking about? Which option I'm talking about? So then we would just click the shape that we want to make more transparent. And then up at the top on the right hand side, there's three dots. I'm going to click that and then it kind of it's like a gradient symbol right beside the paint roller I'm clicking mm -hmm. that and then I can change the transparency yeah I really like that one I feel yeah. like it yeah because then you can yeah. still see what the image is but it's not like overwhelming exactly and then sometimes too like you might want to have like on the collaborative mastermind like I use the reminders that kind of look like an iPhone reminder so what I actually do, and it's already, it is transparent like that because that's just like the style of it. So then I'll actually go to like the image and make the image more transparent. So mm -hmm. it's more noticeable. Yeah, I like yeah. that feature too. It's a good one. Do we ever use the animate one? Because I've seen some people do like the animated stuff, but I'm like, I feel like that would be so time consuming. I don't use it. Um, I don't think it would be time consuming though. Let's see. It just, it would be like you're saving it as a GIF or a GIF or whatever instead of a photo. Right. So it'd probably be better for like stories or something instead of yeah. like. I never thought to use it, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, I've seen it a bunch and I'm like, oh, I wonder how long that takes them to like. Not long. Do, do you different. use the, the scheduler on this? I don't. I use later. Yeah. But can you do carousel? Like, because I notice on Canva, the scheduler, you can't do carousels like you can only do a single post you can't do multiple yeah on later you can do multiple yeah I think you might have to pay for it like pay for the the upgraded version but they do have the carousel option they don't have a real option yet so I'm waiting for that mm. yeah I know the real one is kind of a pain in the butt so you have to like do them although there was that one scheduler that we were gonna try but I don't know if you looked into it and it was complicated or when was it? I did. It was preview. Pre um, you, you couldn't have the sound or something. You I mean, can't the save sounds, right? Like if you save the video, the sound goes away. Right. That's so annoying. Although, you know what? With the reels, we just usually, you usually just save them as a draft, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really not, it's not that bad because I have the time to do it. Like it would be annoying though, if you were doing it right. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't get done if I was doing it. It would be nice though if it was scheduled for sure. Like if I think that Instagram is probably going to team up with someone. And I think they're going to have to. And then I imagine too, like if you had like your, your own audio though. Yeah. This is off topic of Canva, but did you guys see the new feature for like notes or whatever on Instagram? I'm not sure exactly the purpose of that. But. Me neither. It's confusing. I think that people are replying to me. I wonder what the notes are for. Like, should I put notes in here? I don't know. I don't even know what I would put a note on. It's kind of like Twitter maybe. Maybe I'll Google it, find out what is the purpose of notes on Instagram? Yeah. Like stories. Uh, stories took a while to take off too. I was doing some stories when it first happened and there was only like one or two people. And now it's like everybody does stories. So it's probably going to be the same thing. Yeah, I think so too. So that's the colors. Did anyone have any questions about that? Okay. So the next thing would be finding your font. Why is it important? Uh, there are different ways to speak to your market through designs. You can use shapes, colors, lines, space, and even texture. All of these have the ability to evoke different emotions and perceptions. Ask yourself how you want to come across to your audience. So really like the font is your voice. Whatever your, your font is like is how the person's going to sort of read it in their mind. It's actually like, I'm gonna show you the slide after, like it's insane what a difference font can make. It's kind of like how punctuation makes a difference too. 
Yeah, it's like body language for text, right? It is, yeah, because if they're not hearing you say it, it's like using emojis too. Like that's how we get across that we're joking or if we're serious, we're mad, right? Yeah, I always try and use emojis because I like, <laughs> my mom is like terrible for this. She'll be like, okay, or like, okay, period. And I'm like, are you mad at me right now? I know. And I'm like, you want to put a smiley face behind that if you're cool? Are we cool? I'm a huge <laughs> emoji maker or user. I know, me too. Not to. I know. And then I feel rude. Like, I'm be, you have to be like, it's like, there's like a fine line because you don't want to look crazy either. Cause like, an, cause like too many exclamation part points and like too many uh, smiley faces can you, can make you look a little bit psycho. Yeah, exactly. I so it's like a fine someone, line too. If it's someone I don't know, I won't use them until they do. And then I'm like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Real <laughs> Cali shows up. Yeah. There, there was one client that I had actually, and I like put smile, like we were talking and I ended up putting smiley faces. I was sometimes when you're mindlessly texting and then I put so many smiley faces back to back, like on each message, I actually called myself out on it. I was like, I'm sorry. I look crazy right now. I just did smiley faces on every single message. I just sent you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know what? I actually like, there's some people that I like almost like completely communicate in gifts, like on messenger because it's even better. It's like an emoji, but like you can like show them what your face is doing at the moment. <laughs> is it GIF or GIF? I, do like I, don't I think it's a GIF. I don't know if it's a GIF. Yeah. I don't know. Either or. Yeah. Either or. Aluminum, you know I mean. aluminum, same thing. Yep. Exactly. So your font is your voice. So I think it's important to have consistency. It's not like you have to use the same fonts every single time. Like I, I think that would just, it, it's not always appropriate. For the most part, we use the same fonts for Forever Camlets, but there is like the exception where it just doesn't seem right for that particular post. Especially on like YouTube too, right? Like on our YouTube thumbnails, it's going to be a different font. We but want then, like more bold font. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Active. Yeah. Like I said, I think it, it depends, but we do have a couple brand fonts that we use for like a lot of posts and on our like blogs because mm-hmm. you don't want to have like different fonts on every single blog like that just doesn't look cohesive and blend and it's just like kind of scattery but like yeah obviously you want to change it up for like different things that you're doing right I think it's it helps you get into people's like memory because then they associate like that font and that color with you yeah and that's kind of that's the, the goal um, okay so this is my little examples of how font can change <laughs> Have you seen that meme before? Did anyone else read the words in different voices in their head? The one like, like I read. Oh, like, yes. Like, I will. I was. I will always find you. That's creepy. I'm like, I yeah. feel like I'm being chased. And then the other ones, I'm like, oh, that's such a nice little love note. Yeah, it's a little love note. So it definitely makes a difference. Yeah, I know. It's funny. It's like water. And the first one's like water. <laughs> <laughs> cool, refreshing water. <laughs> water. <laughs> okay. And I was going to show you too, because. Canva does have a ton of different fonts, but it doesn't have everything that you might want. So you can actually bring in your own fonts and there's tons of free fonts on the internet. You can again, pay for them on Etsy, which I've actually done because I just couldn't find the same font anywhere. So these ones are free. So I just typed in free fonts, went to the, this website, 1001 free fonts, so for the demonstration, I'm going to choose Elba. So just um, to the right there, there's the download button. So I click download, download. In the top right corner, you click that. And I'd already, I actually already unzipped the file. Really on iPad, you just click it. And then you can see here, it has three different variations. Does that all make sense? I'm not going too fast. When you say you like unzip the file, you mean you just like downloaded the individual things onto your computer? Or, like, yeah, because okay. often like a zip file is just like a really large file that's been put into like a smaller package and then you unzip it onto your device. But for iPads, it's kind of different on each device. But for iPads, all I did was just I pressed the, the zip version. I just mm. clicked it once and then it unzips itself. Oh, I didn't know that. 
Yeah. So yeah. then on my I'm computer, gonna... I have to like go in and then click and drag everything into another folder. It drives me freaking crazy. Yeah. Sometimes it'll say like extract all. Like it's always kind of different. So then you can see it's in there. So then we're going to go back to Canva. Again, we're just going to go back to the, the brand kit page. So I just clicked this, the pink square, and then back to edit. Scroll down to the bottom, brand fonts. And then to the right, I'm going to click upload a font. For iPad, press select first at the top there, the top right. Select each one. Click open. And now it's in there. So then when I go to type, I'm gonna find it. I keep forgetting I don't have a cursor. Okay, so when I go to type, I'm just gonna click the text box, go up to the top left, click the, the font option. And we just put in Elba so you can actually just search it. And it's all here. So then to edit the text, you click the text box again. And if I want to change the size, I can either grab this little circle. It's kind of hard on the iPad. And stretch it. Or you can just change it with the font size increaser here. So, I mean, looking for fonts, there's, there's so many. Like they get, kind of give you themes to like Disney. You wanted a nice little Disney font. <laughs> There's just so many out there. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about that? Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. I actually didn't realize you could upload fonts. So yeah, you can upload them to like Microsoft Word. Yeah. There's been times where I've gone through and I'm like, no, I freaking hate all of these. And mm -hmm. like, I just didn't know what to do about it. And I was like, well, I guess I'm going with this one. Well, so. it's nice too, because like, if you do go to say like Etsy, it'll give you like combinations, which is nice. Cause then it just takes the, the thinking out of that. Yeah, so totally. Like, I know what you mean. Minimalist fonts. Instead of like searching through thousands, right? Oh, I like that. Eva, Fa I don't know how you say that, but yeah. Eva Fire. Pretty. That's really so then it, would, it would be the same thing. You would buy it. It would send you a file and then you would add it to your Canva or your Microsoft, whatever you use. Yeah, it's really pretty actually. So when usually you buy it, then they'll send you like the package via email type thing. So that's like a downloadable version. Right? Yeah, it would probably be in a zip file, the same as what we just did. Mm -hmm. Next, I want to show you how to group elements. This will save you a lot of time if you're going to be using the same information over and over again. Like for example, for Skyly on her posts, it'll say like Skyly McCallum, her phone number, her email address, Instagram information. So I don't want to type that out every single time. So this is how you would do that. So I'm just going to start with the title. I'm holding down my finger on grouping elements and then I'm going to collect or select multiple. And then I'm just going to cl click each one. Six elements selected, click done. And then going back up to the three lines on the top group. So now it's a group. So it's move. Oh, didn't take all of them, but. So it's almost like copying and pasting, but you were able to copy and paste like different groups of text that were there. Yeah, making it all one unit. Right. So instead of copying and pasting each one individually, you just, which is, I've done that so many times. So that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to actually select all of them though. Yeah. I wonder why yeah. I did that. Silly thing. Oh, I think it's just because I, I thought that it had, had taken them all, but it hadn't. That's okay though, because I'm actually going to show you how I did it for you. Oh, and then there's this back button to the back arrow. That'll, that's a time saver. If you like the undo? Up. Yeah, the undo, undo and redo. Also on the, the paid version of Canva, it'll save like every so often. So if you ever want to go back to like a previous version, it'll be saved there. 
So like underneath file version history, mm -hmm. it'll take you back in time. So let's say you want to, again, like save your information. This is how you would do it. And if you don't want it centered like this, you can just click up here. Well, I think actually you have to highlight it. I'm just gonna make it a bit larger. And then we're going to go up to the top right corner and click the arrow that's pointing upwards. And then you click download and it has to be in PNG form. And then you're gonna click transparent background. And we don't want all the pages. So you can just click current page. So page nine. I do like that transparent background option too. I think that that one's like pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, so now it's saved to our camera roll. And I have a little folder here. So just clicking the three buttons on the top and then upload. Ooh, I'm kind of scared to go into my library right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually just gonna just pretend that that's what that is. I've already done it for Skyly's information. So then we're going to upload that file and it'll upload as a transparent background and go back here. Let's change the color so you can really see. Go over top of whatever you put it on, which is good. So if it was for a listing or whatever, it's just so much easier than pulling the picture, pulling the information each, each time. And then you can actually do it for um, like elements. Let's say I wanted, so the same process, you're just going to click the up arrow button, download. Again, we're gonna go to PNG, transparent background. We don't wanna download all these pages. So just again, click current page and then back down to folders. I guess I could show you how to make a folder too. So you just click create new. Right. So if you start, say, say you have a bunch of things like brand stuff for, for someone, then you can create a different folder so that you have them all organized, right? Yeah. So it's just super handy. It's all organized. And then I would select my file, add in whatever, but I've already done it for Skyly. So I'm just going to go back to hers. And then she has this. It's also transparent. Started off not transparent. <laughs> you can change the size. Flip it I, like the flip, I like the flip option too. Like if you were wanting to make it, you're like, oh, it'd be nice if it like fanned out either way. Mm -hmm. that flip option yeah. And then you can actually make it more transparent as well. Like clicking that gradient button again. Yeah. Pretty neat. You can do that with photos too, right? Like any photos that you have, you just save it as a PNG, transparent background, upload it to your folder. And then it's it's always there on hand. Let's go back to this. So we want to make sure that our information's on there. Going down to folder. Look at that. All super handy. All the Ooh, things. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> Very cohesive. Very cohesive. Yeah, so it's all there. Huge time saver. If you can just go back for a second, I don't know. There's this other option that I really like too. And I feel like most people would know this, but just like really quick that you can move things forward and backward depending on what layers you want. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can show that on that thing quickly. Cause I always found it extremely difficult. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, why is it like, this is blocking that. And I don't want it to block that. I want it to be here, but like. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So say we place it down. You're going to click. I'm just actually going to put this behind for the demonstration. So you can see that the EXP has gone behind. Sometimes it'll just upload like that or however you end up layering it. Yeah. So then I'm going to, whatever's easier, whatever's easier to grab because yeah, like you said, it gets super frustrating because I'm trying to grab the EXP and it's only letting me grab the circle. So then I would click the circle, click the three dots at the top, position, why didn't that work? Oh, that's why. Because you move the circle, but then they still have that little flower thing in front. Because it's like three layers, I think. Yeah, you're right. Because now I see EXP is behind the sale word, which is still fine because I think you could grab it now, but there's no, lots of layers. Grab. Exactly. So position, if I wanted this to go backward, 
And you, you can also do like to the back. So it's in the very back, except it won't go behind the background because then what would be the point? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was all I kind of had to show you. Can I add one more then? If you're- Yeah, yeah. Can we do the, like, you know how when we do the thumbnails, how we like get rid of, like say you upload a photo of like me and then we get rid of the background on the photo oh, and it's yeah, just good like idea. A, I can't remember what it's called, but I think that one's a really cool tool too, especially if you're like, I love this photo of me, but like, I don't want the background. I want it to be on a different background. Mm -hmm. So let's say we're going to make a, a thumbnail and we don't want this man. So we're <laughs> going to click him, click the trash. And then we're going to go over to uploads. Cute. <laughs> I did this for Hadley's invite too. Like yeah. there's a picture of her outside on the grass and I just like erased her yes. background. That looked good. So um, maybe I should slow that down. I just went to uploads. I chose the picture that I wanted and all you do is just tap it and it'll throw it onto the page for you. And then I'm going to press edit image at the top and then it's background remover. Clicking that takes a minute to think. <laughs> That's so cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. Right? It is so freaking handy. Like there's the one that Callie did for a thumbnail on our YouTube channel where Callie and I, we were sitting on top of that rock wall outside of the Sandman Center. Tony, I don't know if you remember that photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And then so Callie, like she took the background away and then put both of us sitting on these like boho rattan chairs for the thumbnail for YouTube. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> it's like, That's it's pretty like, crafty. Cause I actually saw that thumbnail and I thought that you already had pictures like in those chairs and then you just combined. No. Like just the two of you. So I was like, so that's, funny. That's, yeah. See, she just, Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, it was. Yeah. When she showed so me. So how did you take that and add a chair to it then to make it look so, yeah. like it was. Okay. I'll let her explain it. Go ahead, Kelly. So um, now that I have us floating in the air, <laughs> I would go to elements. That's kind of something that I'm glad you asked because I haven't showed you elements yet. So this program is kind of like between PowerPoint and Photoshop. It's like more advanced yeah. than PowerPoint, but not quite Photoshop. Yeah, it's, it's pretty darn close to Photoshop though. Okay. Except you can't like blur skin and things like that. Oh, unfortunately, not yet. Okay, so then I think I just put in like boho chair because we both like boho. Do you think it's easier and like more user friendly than PowerPoint? I mean, sorry, not PowerPoint. Um, Photoshop. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, Photoshop is hard. I tried it before and I was like, ah, I've <laughs> deleted it. Forget it. I've tried using Photoshop before. A learning too. Curve. I figure it out. I just found a chair that I liked. I clicked it. It threw it onto the page and I'm going to change the size and going to go up to position because it needs to go backwards. And then I can move. Oh. Now cool. I'm sitting, now I'm sitting on a chair. <laughs> and then I can also take the, the same chair. And I can flip it. Which is what I was talking about before, because mm -hmm. otherwise it's only pointing the one direction. So yeah. you had to reverse the image so that you could sit because Callie's pointing the other way. Yeah. So you can, it's pretty cool. Upside down chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then like, if it were, if I was, oops. If I was doing this for Skyly, I would change this background. So going to photos, because we are not about the red at Forever Camloops. No, no. Too aggressive. It's too, it's too aggressive. <laughs> it does feel aggressive. You know, it's funny that I feel like I've said this before too, one course that I took and they were talking about like, if you were in a restaurant that was red, they actually did like a, like they did this restaurant that was red and people didn't stay near as long. And then they used the same restaurant, but then painted it all blue. And then people like hung out way longer. And I think there's probably some people that are more sensitive to colors than others. 
mm-hmm. but everyone to like some degree. I don't yeah. know. Can't find one yeah. I really like. Psychology behind it for sure, though. Remember when painting your kitchen red was the trend? Yes, my mom still thinks it is. Oh, I I had a red kitchen actually. The very first house we bought, it had a orange wall in the living room, a red wall in the kitchen, and then a oh no, backwards. Sorry, red in the living room, orange in the kitchen, and then yellow in the back room. And you could see all three walls from one spot. So I was like, are they thinking sunset right now? Because it was very aggressive. Oh, probably. I always found it to be like so unsettling, a red kitchen. It's <laughs> just a lot. I think yeah. it was like an Italian moment. Like everyone was like wanted to have like rustic Italian villas. Yeah, fair. It's very Spanish. The red and orange and yellows. I mean, not the colors that I'm talking about in that house were very, very bright, but there is a version of it that is very like Spanish looking. And there was like all the, the brown granite and things like that. Oh yeah. Brown was huge too. I remember that. Yeah. So it's completely changed the look of that. Yeah. And that was really quick too. Like, mm-hmm. like quick and easy to change the whole tone of that thumbnail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then again, I would just go down to um, folders and then I could just put her info there. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I can actually show you one more thing that I just discovered. Because you were actually like, I don't know how you did that, but that was cool. The thumbnail I made of Joe, the gold. Oh, the gold. Yeah. Because when I was originally working on our brand with Meat Pepper before you came on with us as the marketing, I was asking them for, I wanted gold. And like it was very hard to do gold because on the computer it was always like a yellow and I was like, no, I want it gold. And they had to actually like strip an image that had gold in it to use that. Like, I don't know. It was complicated. Apparently I didn't realize it is. It is complicated. Oh, it and it's, it's a little bit, it's a bit, you could do it on Photoshop, but it would be a pain in the butt because you'd have to do like each letter. So on here, it's a bit limited. I think there's only like one font you can do, mm. but you would go to elements in the left corner here. And then you click letter C frame, or you type that in, sorry. And then you have to use ones that have like that sky background. Oh, I see you're talking about one, one with like the little rolling hill thingies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, metallics are in, like even like silver and stuff like that. That's like people really like gold and silver and like copper colors right now. And it's it's hard to do on a 2d surface like the computer you know it is really hard i don't know why i can't find a whatever so you just keep going through until you find the letters you need doesn't match but oh here maybe they only have some Hmm. okay anyway so then if you wanted to do gold you would go back to photos on the left hand side here gold foil and there's tons of different tones oh So then I'm going to, it's actually an image then that you put onto it. It's not actually a color. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cause if you type, if you try and find gold, like in, in put into your color scheme yet, like you said, it's just going to be like different variations of yellow. So let's just say, let's say I wanted this marbly looking one. I'm going to hold it down with my finger, drag it over and drop it into the letter. Very pretty. Mm -hmm. Hello. Does yeah, I know what you mean, but because you have to use that one with the sky in it, that's the like they use that a lot on like their templates for like the background too. Yeah. Those are the only ones you can use to upload photos. A photo too, yeah. And you're right, you like hang out over top of it trying to get it to like recognize. And that. I found it a lot easier on my laptop. Like it's it's kind of t- when you can use like a mouse. So again, this is a frame, anything that has like that rolling hills in the background. Give me. Yeah, I thought that was really cool, the letter thing. Because, yeah, I've always wanted to use, like, metallic fonts, too. And I just, it's like, I guess it doesn't exist. I figured that out. Frustrating, because I love the metallics. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they'll, again, like, it just takes time, and then they'll come around to it, hopefully. Yeah. 
people probably have to submit in like requests or whatever for them to like upgrade things, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that's that's it, I think. Did anyone have any questions? No questions. You guys are impressive. Callie, you that's just a good teacher. Yeah, you hit all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed <laughs> what you're doing there. You lost me a few times. <laughs> yeah, it takes, it takes some playing around. I think that's like every program though. It always takes time to like learn it, right? But mm-hmm. I do I do love Canva. I feel like it's I don't know, it's def- definitely like leveled up like all of our like marketing and stuff like that. So even when we do like mail outs and stuff, Callie creates them all on Canva because you can create different sizes for whatever you're doing. Like if you create, say if you're like create new and then it's like, what do you want to create? And it has all these different size options for whatever you want to do. So if you want to do like a letter or create a letterhead, or if you want to create a thumbnail or even for example, a, what's it called? Like a real your reels on Instagram, like you can create like thumbnails for your reels that are a very specific size as well. And they have like all of those sizes actually in there so that when you download it and print it, if you wanted to do like a mail out letter or something, then it's actually the size of what it is that you were wanting when you were creating it, which is cool. And I think you can resize things after too. So say you create a Instagram post graphics, say we're going to do our, we're going to do like our ice cream client appreciation event. And Callie creates a graphic to go onto an email. We could also resize that and print it out as a letter too afterwards. Like you don't have to, like you can change your sizings after if you want. Super user-friendly. I love that part. Hey guys. Um, I was just going to say the real, the real cover is great because you know like when you're changing the cover photo on your reels you don't really know where what it's going to show you like say if it was a yeah. you know like it might just be like yeah th- in that way you can control it because you you know exactly what's going to be shown in the real size the real cover size yeah, yeah. i like the thumbnails that they suggest from when they pull from the video because it's just like a still image of like the reel that you created and it always has your face like weird and like positioned yeah like, exactly and, and you obviously want to have it shared on your feed as because you'll get more traffic when you actually share it to your feed but then sometimes it doesn't go cohesive with your actual like grid which mm-hmm. sucks so I think creating the thumbnails on canva and uploading it it's an extra step but then they look way better (laughs) yeah yeah exactly okay guys if you have no questions i guess we will go for the day it is 1204 so thank you for spending the hour with us thank you thank you okay oh also a reminder there are lots of videos that we've been uploading onto youtube so if you liked the video today or the session today go check out the other ones that we've done because they're all kind of similar in the sense of like how we've candid conversation but they're all on different topics so okay thanks guys have a good week thank you see you